So we also need to look at the seventh house itself and any planets that are in the seventh house will be important in modifying our relationships of course um, you know if we get Saturn there it's going to show maybe an older partner or show a kind of um, you know desire for solitude Saturn in the seventh house actually can be quite good for relationships because it makes us realistic and careful and make a commitment to our partners other planets you know Venus in the seventh house also really draws us into relationships but it can you know bring out a lot of desires but it also usually makes us a good partner. Mercury can make us kind of playful and flit around a little bit, like a lot of partners. Jupiter can make us more um, over-optimistic about partnerships, and sometimes the world has a hard time measuring up to Jupiterian standards. So, for example, you know, Sun can make us pretty self-interested in a relationship. Moon is also one that makes for, um, you know, a lot of you know, desire to have a have a partnership, but it also can make for a lot of emotional longing because it's impossible to merge with the other person. So, you know, things that influence the seventh house, mainly planets, several planets there. Of course, if you get the nodal axis involved with the seventh house, it's also going to be involved with the first house as well. So we wind up with, um, you know, a lot of intensity around the relationship axis if you if you have the nodes in one or the other. Of course, if Rahu is in the first and Ketu is in the seventh, then the person's going to be much more motivated toward their own perspective and have a harder time compromising with others. If it's reversed and Ketu's in the first and Rahu's in the seventh, then they'll um, really put a lot of importance on the partner, maybe you know, tend to lose their own sense of self quite a lot. But these are just general statements. You know, but um, you know, one thing to know is there is a difference between the seventh lord and the seventh house. The seventh lord really shows the the origin of that energy. So, as I said in the seventh house lord video, you know, it shows not just um, you know not just the type of of partner that we're drawn to, but what we get from the partnership. Like I said, Mars rules the second and seventh house for Libra, um, so we're going to get our values from our partner and. You know, Mercury rules the 7th and 10th house from Sagittarius, so the partners tend to be related to our duties and, resp and our responsibilities, and they tend to be, you know, in a sort of Mercury way. That's why Sagittarius and Pisces might tend to, you know, like to try a lot of partnerships or make sure the partnership is fun and because Mercury is there. So that's the origin of that 7th house, but relative to what comes later, you know, we have you know, maybe planets in the seventh house. So that's what a planet occupying the house does, is it it sort of changes the field of that thing, means like while you're relating with the partner. It doesn't show the partner, but shows your interaction with the partner. It's going to be colored by these kinds of things. And of course, you know, the seventh house is an angle, so if you get one of the trinal house rulers there, like the ninth house ruler in the seventh house, then that means you might have a teacher that you have a relationship with, because ninth house is teachers. You might get the fourth house ruler in the seventh. Fourth house is about our feelings and emotions, so it could really bring a lot of your heart and soul into the relationship. Fifth house ruler in the seventh house means someone who is like a romantic partner, because it's fifth house stuff. You know, so again, you also have to look at the rulerships when you start looking at houses, what the planets rule. Um, and what their karak is of and things like that. So it's not just the planet as a karaka, you know, like Mars in the seventh, obviously going to show some kind of, you know, aggression. But if Mars rules the seventh, if, you know, if Mars rules the ninth house, like let's say it's for Pisces, you know, Mars in the seventh for Pisces is also the ninth lord in the seventh for Pisces. So it shows a relationship to teachers, for instance, or wanting to get, you know, to be inspired by the partner. So this brings in a, you know, a, you know, more subtlety once we start looking at the nature of what the what the planets rule. Um, then we start to see that when a planet or planets occupy the seventh house, that it's not just influencing the relationship for the nature of the planet, like you know Saturn making us careful. But if Saturn rules the third house, it can show a kind of competitiveness with them or something like that. So you want to bear those things in mind for sure. When you look at the seventh house, it's going to influence the, 
field of the relationships themselves. Again, notice how your relationships and the people who you know who have planets in the seventh house, notice how their relationship takes on that quality. But try to have discrimination. Also look at the seventh house ruler, which is what their, you know, what their partner is bringing into their life, and then see how they do it in the seventh house. That's what the seventh house is, the, the thing happening itself. Um, and of course, many times there's not a planet there, so it's, it'll, it'll, it'll just be up to the ruler. And I would say don't put a lot of importance on aspects to empty houses. If you get two planets aspecting it, meaning like two of the outer planets with their special aspects, Saturn and Mars, Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter, Mars, Mars, Saturn, whatever. If you get two of the outer planets aspecting the house and it's an empty house, then you might pay attention. But if it's just one, or if it's a bunch of planets in the first house and they're aspecting the seventh house, don't get into that kind of thing. That doesn't work. Um, a seventh house aspect into an empty house, just forget it, it doesn't work. If you're looking at outer planet aspects because they're one way, then, and if you get a couple of them, then pay attention. If you just have Jupiter, for instance, aspecting it, uh, don't pay much attention to that. There is no mention in the classics of planets aspecting, um, you know, um, houses, empty houses. Um, so I wouldn't put much attention on that at all. So, look at the nature of the planet affecting the house, which is the field of the relationship, and also look at what the planet rules. So, the house ruler, and especially if it forms any Raj Yogas or anything, then it can really, you know, tend to elevate the, um, you know, the um, relationship based on that. 